Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. These verses describe the ministry of John the Baptist, the forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a ministry that deserves close attention. Few preachers ever produced such effects. There went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan. None ever received such praise from the great head of the church. Jesus calls him a burning and shining light. The great bishop of souls himself declares that among them that are born of women there hath not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. Let us then study the leading features of his ministry. John the Baptist spoke plainly about sin. He taught the absolute necessity of repentance before any one can be saved. He preached that repentance must be proved by its fruits. He warned men not to rest on outward privileges or outward union with the church. This is just the teaching that we all need. We are naturally dead and blind and asleep in spiritual things. We are ready to content ourselves with a mere formal religion and to flatter ourselves that if we go to church we shall be saved. We need to be told that except we repent and are converted, we shall all perish. John the Baptist spoke plainly about our Lord Jesus Christ. He taught that one far mightier than himself was coming among them. He was nothing more than a servant. The coming one was the king. He himself could only baptize with water. The coming one could baptize with the Holy Ghost. Take away sins, and would one day judge the world. This again is the very teaching that human nature requires. We need to be sent direct to Christ. We are all ready to stop short of this, we want to rest in our union with the church, regular use of the sacraments, and diligent attendance on an established ministry. We ought to be told the absolute necessity of union with Christ himself by faith. He is the appointed fountain of mercy, grace, life, and peace. We must each have personal dealings with him about our souls. What do we know of the Lord Jesus? What have we got from him? These are the questions on which our salvation hinges. John the Baptist spoke plainly about the Holy Ghost. He preached that there was such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He taught that it was the special office of the Lord Jesus to give it to men. This again is a teaching which we greatly require. We need to be told that forgiveness of sin is not the only thing necessary to salvation. There is another thing yet and that is the baptizing of our hearts by the Holy Ghost. There must not only be the work of Christ for us, but the work of the Holy Ghost in us. 
there must not only be a title to heaven by the blood of Christ, but a preparedness for heaven wrought in us by the Spirit of Christ. Let us never rest till we know something by experience of the baptism of the Spirit. The baptism of water is a great privilege, but let us see to it that we also have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist spoke plainly about the awful danger of the impenitent and unbelieving. He told his hearers that there was a wrath to come. He preached of an unquenchable fire, in which the chaff would one day be burned. This again is a teaching which is deeply important. We need to be straightly warned that it is no light matter whether we repent or not. We need to be reminded that there is a hell as well as a heaven, and an everlasting punishment for the wicked, as well as an everlasting life for the godly. We are fearfully apt to forget this. We talk of the love and mercy of God, and we do not remember sufficiently His justice and holiness. Let us be very careful on this point. It is no real kindness to keep back the terrors of the Lord. It is good for us all to be taught that it is possible to be lost for ever, and that all unconverted people are hanging over the brink of the pit. In the last place, John the Baptist spoke plainly about the safety of true believers. He taught that there was a garner for all who are Christ's wheat, and that they would be gathered together there in the day of his appearing. This again is a teaching which human nature greatly requires. The best of believers need much encouragement. They are yet in the body. They live in a wicked world. They are often tempted by the devil. They ought to be often reminded that Jesus will never leave them nor forsake them. He will guide them safely through this life and at length give them eternal glory. They shall be hid in the day of wrath. They shall be safe as Noah in the ark. Let these things sink down deeply into our hearts. We live in a day of much false teaching. Let us never forget the leading features of a faithful ministry. Happy would it have been for the Church of Christ if all its ministers had been more like John the Baptist.